Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another one of our nice little fly along live streams. Uh, today we've uh, taken ourselves all the way up to uh, beautiful Alaska to uh, kind of take advantage of some of these nice little float planes that uh, Microsoft's been so kind to give to us. Now normally uh, float planes aren't really my bag. Oh, apparently there's a tsunami over here. Uh, normally float planes aren't my bag, but hey, this is kind of a fun opportunity to try something we don't normally get to do. We did do some stuff in the Icon way, way back in the day, but hey, you know what? Might as well have a little bit of fun, something a little bit different. Uh, for those of you joining us this evening, uh, like I said, we are at uh, Kilo Alpha Echo, which is a water runway, which I think is cool. We're actually going to be making our way to the west here, kind of towards uh, Sitka, Alaska, and we're going to be stopping out at a couple of different watering landings uh, kind of along the way here, so that uh, we have plenty of opportunity to kind of practice that smack in the water skills. But already, I, I'm, I'm feeling like the chill of the air, you know, you'd have your nice little warm flannel, and we have to get over these big old mountains that are kind of chilling over here on this side of things. So it should be a pretty fun flight. It shouldn't be the most aggressive, scary flight, because again, um, there's not going to be nothing uh, kind of nasty in here. We're not going to try to go through them. We're going to go over them. So without further ado, well, let's go ahead and tax yourselves out and get ready. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my water rudder is in the correct position. I'm going to just make sure that's pulled towards me so these little things are ducked in the water. Uh, the next thing you want to double check is to make sure your landing gear is uh, in the up position and not in the down position. If you uh, want to go ahead and use those landing gear to go ahead and uh, pop down on the water, uh, you're going to make a really, really, really uh, deep channel of water and it does not go nearly as quickly. Let's go ahead and pop a couple notches of flaps down, and now I'm pretty much ready to roll. I'm going to get this thing uh, kind of rumbly-brumbly, and we're just going to kind of make our way a little bit towards the uh, main little water channel here. Seeing the water is kind of coming towards me, but again, it's pretty slow water, so I'm not worried about it too much. Kind of kick it over. I'm going to smoothly apply full power. Pull the controls a little bit towards us, and we're just going to kind of ride right out of the step. any second just going to kind of come loose out of the water we're just going to try to catch it the best we can staying ground effect and off we go delightful knock up a couple things of flaps and now we're going to just kind of make our way like i said directly over there to the west and kind of enjoying a little flight here speed here is going to be about 75 knots unfortunately we've got those gigantic floats kind of hanging off the bottom of us right now which makes it very very tricky to kind of build up any sort of real speed with this thing but it still beats the icon i hate to say it That's looking pretty solid now. I'm just going to kind of start swinging my way over here towards the west. And more like, so let's call it southwest. And we're going to make our way over to our first float plane landing. I'm going to go ahead and back the RPM up. This is the X-Cub. I kind of think of this as uh, it's the Cessna 172's engine in general performance, but it's only a two-seater and it tends to be a tail dragger. So it's kind of an interesting airplane. There we go. I'm going to swing a little bit over to the right. And. That should do it perfectly. Delightful. I feel like I'm done in Bob Ross mode automatically because uh, he actually spent quite a bit of time up here in this uh, kind of part of the world, you know, working on army bases, basically painting the whole time, which I think is absolutely awesome when, uh, when you really, really kind of break it down to it. And, uh, you know, when you think of those happy little trees and like every little Alaska kind of thing you could possibly imagine, you know, you definitely get something along these lines. Actually, you know, we'll play a little bit around with that real fast. Once I cross to a thousand feet or so, I'll go ahead and slap on the altitude hold. And we'll go ahead and kind of get this thing rolling along here. That looks pretty good. And perfect. Cool. Let's go ahead and play with the uh, scenery, so to speak. Do some weather. Time of day looks pretty good. All right. Yeah, actually, we'll put it behind us to make it a little bit better. If only in the real world you had more control. Oh, yeah, there it is. And I'm noticing this aircraft is uh, taking us way, way off to the left here. But if I actually take a look here, this is uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator at its finest. You'll notice here that it says that I'm slightly off my particular course, even though when you go ahead and take a look at my actual little magenta line of safety here, you can see I'm quite on course. So uh, go figure that one out, will you? Nope, GPS mode is set. Hmm, weird. All right, I'm going to go ahead and back up my manifold pressure down to 25 inches, leave it about 2501. I'm going to go ahead and play it with the mixture handle just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit, and now we can kind of just sort of absorb everything. Uh, now that we've got everybody kind of happy and we're kind of making our way along, let, let's see who's joining us. Uh, Etienne, uh, these are way, way over on that side. A photo is by Kev. I'm not sure who this is. He's in the Husky, I believe. Looking behind us, I can see there's a pretty good number of folks. So uh, remember, you can always do uh, increase the speed to join us. Regime, welcome back. Uh, Load alarm, welcome back. Reaper MD, welcome back. Gamersense, uh, oh, I can't read the date. 
Uh, welcome back. Also, I think there's a hollow boy back there as well, and I do not recognize Charlie Charlie 19. Actually, that's the airplane, which would explain why I do not recognize it. But uh, other than that, welcome back, everybody who's decided to come along. And for all of you who are kind of joining us for the first time today, basically all we do is uh, kind of fly around for a little less than an hour, land at a bunch of spots, you know, kind of make it look pretty easy at the same time as, you know, answer some fun questions. A little later in the stream, I'll tell you a little bit about my adventure today. I was uh, doing a little bit of flying in the real world, which is really, really cool. We got a great opportunity to basically um, learn what wind gusts are all about. Now, the interesting thing is if I actually go back and look, and if you guys would like to see this, I can call this up for you. You can see my wind speed uh, change as the actual flight continued, and it changed like literally 20 times a minute. It was crazy. So it was an extra bumpy flight for me for sure. All right, we're going to be approaching our first spot where we're going to go ahead and set this thing down in the water and I'll kind of be careful with it. I love the color. It just looks so nice. So, 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 so pretty here, especially when we get into these mountains and try to like sneak into some of these little places here a little later on. So now this one is a little sketchy. So what you're going to do is uh, you've got this little kind of mountaintop right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop right over the mountaintop. And right on the opposite side, there's going to be a large lake just kind of chilling here. Now, if I remember right, there's actually a couple little buildings sort of over here on the right. So I believe the concept is you kind of do one of these sort of things to kind of spiral through. So um, we can also, of course, come down this way, which has got a big mountain right there. Or we can kind of do one of those and kind of put it down on the water. I'm going to go probably for the latter. <laughs> All I think of is ticks. I think of a lot of ticks. That's the first thing that comes to mind when I see this many trees. <laughs> Especially this type of trees. Oh, that is just so nice. Ah. I remember like in the old days when you had like Flight Simulator 2004 or even like Microsoft Flight Simulator 98 and you like play with like the um, brightness settings and like everything would just be like, you know, a Nintendo 64 polygon and it's uh, just amazing to see how far we've come. Of course, it's uh, not perfect as you can probably see right here as I'm kind of highlighting this. All right, let's get ready to put this thing down on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take it off of automatic pilot. We're going to go ahead and point ourselves down and just kind of gently come down here. So remember the way that this particular runway is shaped, and this is a little weird, is uh, basically you're going to see the runway, well, not really, the runway is going to be going along this direction. So like I said, we can always kind of spiral out and then come swinging back around. Pop the thing down in the water and be careful. A uh, friendly reminder, uh, if you do have your water rudders in the down position, I just remember when you do hit the water, the thing is going to bite really, really, really effectively. Oh, this is so super cool. So you could like, oh man, I know exactly what I'm going to do. So I see this uh, really, really neat little mountain here. Just kind of like kind of chilling. So what I'm going to do is uh, the runway is actually right below us right now. I'll see if we can actually see it. Probably not if I had to put money on it. Let's go take a quick peek. Uh, there's got to be something down there to hit. There's like a pier or something like that. Eh, yeah, right there. There's actually, it looks like a little pier or something like that. Oh, there it is. So that's probably uh, where people would normally be kind of popping in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come swing around this ugly mountain right here. Hit the plane all nice and dirty, dirty. And we'll go ahead and pop that thing down in the water real fast. I'll pretend now we're delivering um, well, some submarine sandwiches. I think that'd be fun. And of course, we've got, I don't know what the deal there is, but I get the feeling that it's just tremendously steep right there. Swing around nice and gently. We'll go ahead and start getting the plane ready to land. Pop a couple notches of flaps. Hit myself in the face with the handle. Uh, by the way, as I have uh, grown in years and uh, grown in experience in real planes, I really, really appreciate a mechanical flap lever as opposed to an electric flap lever. It uh, does, not, does not go well with me usually. All right, here we go. Landing in water is a very, very, very misleading because um, you basically just kind of got to smack into it. It's not like something where you're going to be like, ooh, a flare. Yeah, you flare, you end up biting it, and then it does the big kertrunk. So you just sort of hold it, and then the plane suddenly stops flying. Then you get kush-bushed. I'm going to pull it a little to the left here. I don't want to go smack into those. Go ahead and pop it down. The water rudders are going to bite, and you got to hold the controls just forward enough that you don't bounce. Nice. All right, we are down. So we have our first little landing there. Abdul Mutlav is uh, kind of sneaking right up. Oh, careful, pull up. Boom. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who bounced it. That doesn't count as two landings, by the way. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and I'll pop those suckers up. Uh, I immediately instinctively reached for the uh, handbrake here, but unfortunately the handbrake uh, does nothing when you're in the water, but that's perfectly fine. All right, I'm going to line myself up with this direction here. I'm going to give myself plenty of room. One notch of flaps. Uh, somebody else has uh, given it a try. Look behind us, see how everybody else is doing loaded alarms, going for it. Kemi Sharpa, Sharpa is coming around as well. Oh, okay, 88 was the gamer. Got it. All right, let's do it. Full power. Here's up for water landing. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, bounce ourselves right back into the air. And we're going to go take ourselves to the next landing spot. So we've uh, successfully made our delivery here, and uh, now we're going to kind of make our way down as well. Up for water landing. Ooh, that is, uh, that, that's, uh, that's quite the experience of bumps. All right, going to lift up gently out of the water. 
and we are good. Here's 70 knots, slap up that notch of flaps, and let's go to our next landing spot. So our next landing spot is called the Warm Spring Bay. It is a Bravo November Foxtrot. Now basically we're going to be crossing this a pretty large sound in order to get over there, but um, it shouldn't be too, too bad. Again, I'm going to pop up to about a thousand feet. We don't have to worry about climbing like crazy until uh, we try to get over to Sitka, which is going to involve, uh, eh, like I said, a bit of a climb. Here's up for water landing. Ooh, this thing uh, does not want to climb at that speed. For water landing. Here's up for water landing. Last week was the absolute craziest week I think I've had in years. Here. There was just so, 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 so many things that I had to do. It was crazy. Of course, today, like I said, I did get to actually fly in the real world, which was pretty cool. Minus that incredibly nasty high pressure front, it was pretty neat to fly again. I'm just going to kind of swing this way a little bit. Water landing. Here's mm, it smells like up trim in here. I think that joke works the same way. Uh, looking pretty sound, about 800 feet. I guess we're going to pop up to about 1,000, then we'll go ahead and start leveling this thing out. I'm glad to see that everybody enjoyed the video that shows off how messy my room is. A bunch of people had some uh, pretty fun comments in there to that effect. And yes, the uh, rift itself has little covers on it, so you don't have to worry about actually damaging it, so I'm not worried about it too, too much. Right, spin around this way, I'm getting a little high here, so I'm just going to kind of ride back down. Here's up for and that looks pretty good right there. And once we get down to about a thousand, we'll go ahead and kick everything in again. Here's up for water landing. That looks pretty. Whoop! No, you don't. Here's up for Perfect. Double check to make sure the right lights are the light rights. We altitude hold mode. We're getting a gear advisory. I'm gonna go ahead and slap that button and tell it to be quiet. And now we go ahead and proceed. It should be a pretty short flight over to our next destination here. Again, it's only about 25 nautical miles that we're gonna be traveling here. I'm gonna give it a little bit more power. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce my RPM. Man, it'd be neat if Cessna 172s uh, actually had a constant speed propeller. You could get so much more out of them. And we should be good right there. Perfect. Can't do that in the real world. It's almost impossible. Ah, that's not true. <laughs> All right, let's see how everybody is. So uh, we have a pretty good amount of uh, folks that are still able to follow us pretty good so far. I see a bunch of people took the 172. I went with the X-Cub because I just wanted something just a tiny bit different, a little bit more aerodynamic as well. But again, I'll have to kind of see how those sort of things goes. So what we're going to do now is our next landing, like I said, is going to be in a place called Warm Spring Bay. And it's uh, basically, if you take a look where these two mountains uh, kind of meet, apparently uh, my graphics have come down a little bit here, but that's all right. Where these two mountains meet, there's this really, really large, uh, really, really neat bay. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to kind of swing through and I'll go ahead and pop down. Once we do that, we're going to pop right over the top of these mountains and kind of make our way over to Sitka. Uh, folks who are willing to try something really dangerous, uh, feel free to do a landing gear landing with an airplane that's not supposed to be landing on the land. Yeah, they did give us wheels, but that doesn't mean that's what they're for kind of a thing. Or, uh, of course, if you want to do the water landing, there's a neat little place over on the side to go ahead and do that as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get everything sorted out. I'm going to go ahead and pop in the back seat here. Oh, no, it won't let me do it. Ah, that's no fun. <laughs> Let's see, uh, ooh, we can turn one of these on. I did not realize I was on pulse mode. Lame. All right, everybody's uh, kind of sneaking behind me here. We got USAPR, I missed you earlier, sorry. And uh, Tanqueray, I missed you earlier as well. Now, uh, one of the cool things I got to do today too, which is the first time I've ever got to try it, is an actual real world autopilot. Turns out real world autopilots are even better than the ones that are actually inside the airplane, even when it gets uh, really, really nasty turbulence. It basically keeps you fixed in space. It's it's like basically like the way this aircraft is handling now, even in turbulence. It's I've never experienced anything that smooth before. The problem they don't tell you is in the real world, there's always usually a little button that shuts off the automatic pilot. Uh, what I did not realize is that when they had built the thing, they have an automatic pilot shutoff button attached to the next, right where the um, mute button is, or I should say the um, intercom button is. So what you do is you reach over here to hit the, uh, of course, the, uh, I want to talk to somebody on the radio. You'd mash that button and the autopilot would go beep, beep, beep. And all of a sudden, aw, <laughs> just kind of one of those things. Of course, you did vice versa, too. You went to talk to on the radio, and you wondered why everybody kept saying, could you say again for such and such? And that's when you realized, oh, I was pushing the autopilot button, not the radio button. Again, people need to think about where they place stuff. It makes it a lot safer. Let's see how we're doing. Looks pretty good so far. Looks pretty good so far, indeed. It's kind of a neat plane. I actually looked up how much one of these things costs, and uh, even though they're like these carbon fiber monstrosities that only seat two, um, they're still pretty restricted by rate, and they're fabulously expensive, like 300, 400, 500 US dollars, and or a thousand US dollars to actually get one of these things. Which I'm like, but, 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 you, you know what I mean. I mean, the leather seats are nice, I'll give you that. Alright, we're basically gonna make sneak our way across this bay. We could, of course, make things interesting and take a look what the real world weather is. Let's go take a peek. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay 
Oh, check that out. So, it's not every day you get to see a double rainbow. Notice if you change the lighting, you get a different effect of the rainbow right there. Yep, there, if anybody needs a screenshot, I can't do worse than that one right there. That's uh, pretty darn cool. Unfortunately, this is all precipitation, so I don't exactly want to be flying through that. And uh, ugh, you can see everybody was able to finally catch up to me and rip by because of the fact that I went ahead and reduced my airspeed because I was flying into it like that. Yuck. Tangerie's going by. I'm surprised nobody in a jet has ripped by, but the problem is, of course, is that we don't have a lot of room in order to be able to safely be sending jets by. So eh, that kind of happens. All right, well, what do we have here? That's a 7 minutes 53. Okay, that's not bad. That was another thing I found really fun today is I was playing with the real-world GPS, and this thing changes a lot. I mean, like right now, it's kind of stuck to about a couple different seconds, and it's pretty consistent, but realistically, the wind gusts just make it go all over the place. It'd be like 13, then it'll say like five and a half. So it's more like, you know, wishful thinking estimated time en route, more so than it is actual estimated time en route. Okay, so as I over ripping through here, you can see you've got this kind of little peninsula here, which kind of hangs out. There's a few different pieces to that. And like I said, where we're going to pop over is going to be right kind of between these two little spots right here. What I could do is I get myself a little bit of altitude, but uh, the problem with that, though, is that we're going to lose all that altitude in order to safely put ourselves down in this bay. Uh, Frank, uh, Frank, I'm sorry, I'm not sure which one it is, had uh, pointed out the fact that he saw a double rainbow the other day. I actually have a picture of a double rainbow in the plane. If you give me half a second, I'll see if I can actually grab it for us real fast. 50-50 uh, if I can actually find the picture fast enough to share. Let's see what I get here. Oh yeah, I got the picture still. I got the picture. Hang on, let me call that up for you guys so you can actually see it. So um, this was uh, when I was flying back during the summer. I actually was able to, um, this was a picture I took from the, when I was flying. Again, you can see the little wing of the 172 here. And literally, you have the double rainbow. The part that you don't get to see in this actual photograph is the fact that for the last 15 minutes, we were basically trying to run away from the storm as fast as we could. So when we finally got around it so we can actually start to land the plane, all of a sudden, just out of the corner of your eye, you see this thing I kind of split down out of nowhere, kind of doing one of those sort of a things. And it's just like, that's just cool. I just absolutely love that. Again, I had to tell the other guy to basically hold on to the controls so I can get my camera out. So it's kind of a neat experience, kind of a neat experience. Oh yeah, here's the uh, actual storms that we were trying to get around. <laughs> so you can see that's exactly what it looks like in the real world and exactly what it looks like inside that weather as well. It's just, it, it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. <laughs> That was, that was just cool. That was just cool. Like I said, uh, once in a while you get lucky and you get something like that. And like for every amazing, like, oh my God, look what I can see here. This is so incredible. I'm so happy to fly. There's the moments where um, you hope that the airplane doesn't break. You know, I had a fun time today uh, when I pulled off the taxiway and went ahead and uh, uh, went ahead and got everything ready for uh, doing my taxi. The engine shut off on me. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. And um, I absolutely could not believe it. I remember talking to the air traffic control guy saying, you know, I request taxi to, uh, you know, the Hartford Jet Center is where I was at the time. And as right as I do that, I pull the throttle back, the engine just cuts out. <laughs> it was like, oh, God. So uh, he called me back immediately and says, you know, taxi to whatever. I'm like, uh, stand by, the engine just shut off. You know, one of those, I've had an engine failure. And it was just quiet on the radio as like, you know, that five seconds it took to restart the engine felt like 15 minutes as everybody else in the world is looking at you going, oh, when are you actually going to go ahead and get this thing going again? You're holding up traffic. And uh, I managed to get the thing going again, acknowledged this radio call, zipped down the uh, taxiway, parked the darn thing. But of course, uh, the bad news there with that was I went to go park the darn plane. Somebody had taken the spot next to me. So um, if you've ever had to manhandle an airplane before, it's a lot harder than slewing the airplane if you need to put it somewhere. That is for sure. All right, it's time to get ready for our landing. Sweet. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of make sure everything's in good shape here. Uh, there's a pretty big, um, nasty piece of rock right here that I'm basically going to go smacking directly into if I'm not careful. But we really do need to be able to kind of get around this one so we can probably do a little bit to the right, and that's basically what I'm going to set my controls up to do here. Go ahead and synchronize my heading. Swing just a little teeny, 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 tiny thing to the right. Go ahead and bop the heading button there, and we should be on our way once again. <laughs> uh, Steve, that's uh, absolutely awesome news. 
Um, uh, commercial is an amazing license. Honestly, commercial pilots get to have the real fun during the flight exam. Because uh, whereas, you know, the private pilots, you know, you get a fun couple fun maneuvers like, oh, we're going to do, you know, an engine out approach or we got to do a slip approach from really high altitude or something like that. But in the reality is, um, you know, the commercial guys get to do things like chandelles. They get to do lazy eights. They get to do a power off 180s, which is one of the most fun maneuvers you will ever get to try, by the way. Basically, what you do is uh, when you're in the traffic pattern, right as you cross the 1000 foot blocks, go ahead and cut your engine and land the plane on the 1000 foot blocks without increasing the power at any point. It is, uh, oh my God, it'll teach you so much about controlling the energy of the airplane in such a short period of time. Um, as far as another thing I will say though, Stevie M is, uh, remember I'm not a CFI. I cannot give you professional advice. I can show you some things that I find entertaining inside the sim, but that's about as much as that. But I really do appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Oh, USAPR, awesome. All right, here we go. Now this is so cool because our landing spot's basically right here. And again, notice they always pick these really obvious little rocks to kind of say, hey, I've got a landing spot down here. Uh, this time we'll go ahead and uh, do a really, really nasty landing into a stall here and see if we can shorten up that landing distance a little tiny bit. Uh, one thing that somebody was telling me earlier is this little water rudder you have to be really careful about because it sticks in the water pretty far and it'll actually break off if you come into something a little on the shallow side. So it's like, oh, I never thought of that. You know, because when you think of the rudder on the plane, you think, you know, the rudder on the plane. All right, we should be pretty well lined up here. So again, the runway is right over this little kind of nub right here. You just go straight down into it. And again, by runway, I mean, you know, waterway. Go ahead and kill the power. We're gonna go ahead and line ourselves up and start putting this thing on down. There we go. That looks pretty darn good right there. Nice. Another fun experience we had today is I went to land the airplane and somebody was parked in the middle of the runway. It turns out there was a glider crew connecting the glider up to the airplane that they were towing it with. So as soon as this other guy was coming for a landing, he didn't even know somebody was on the runway. So you want to talk about working really, really fast with other pilots to explain. Um, you can't land there right now. There's no room to land. Of course, in the back of my mind, I'm going, what if somebody had an engine failure and had to use that runway? <laughs> Go ahead and kill the power just a tiny bit. Absolutely, Steve. The 180 to a stop. Uh, for those who have not tried that one, try it. If you can get good at that, you will you will go places. So what my flight instructor did to me, again, private land here, not commercial land, is that he basically, uh, we were up at 6,000 feet. He's like, all right, land the plane, pull the throttle back. So it was like, oh. <laughs> so not only did I have to uh, 180 to a stop, I had to, you know, 1,080 to a stop because you basically have to spiral down to the runway, which unfortunately for us was like eight and a half miles away. So we basically had to coast all the way there. And then as soon as we actually got there, of course, I managed to put it on 1,000 footers. And he was just like, he was ready to quit. It was hilarious. All right. So that's where we want to be. If you take a look, there's those couple little buildings right there. That's basically the uh, place that this particular seaway is going to actually service. And it's going to go ahead and put us on the ground really, really nicely. This is so cool. Unfortunately, we have to get over these in order to get over to Sitka. And that will be, like I said, our last stop today. And like I said, for people who want to do things nice and stressful, uh, knock yourselves out and uh, try to do that. Um, try to get over those mountains in a hurry. Or even better, try to land with the landing gear when we get there. That's kind of dangerous. All right, there's going to be our spot. I'll go ahead and bring this thing down to extremely low speeds. And we'll try a slightly different smack into the water strategy and see if it makes a big difference here. I think that is two houses. Yep, there's two houses. Look at this. They've got their own private cove. Oh, man. Could you imagine, like, having to go to the grocery store out here, though? Like, if it's the middle of the winter, what are you supposed to do? Go we'll grab a plane and then uh, come back in here for a landing or something? I don't think so. One of these days, we're going to have to do an extreme weather kind of a thing as well, where we just basically stress ourselves out. And now, uh, for folks who are asking about the VATSIM stuff as well, um, I definitely want to do more VATSIM things. It has just been unbelievably busy the last, uh, like I said, week, as I was mentioning at the beginning. I'm going to slip the plane a tiny bit here so I can get those flaps all the way down. There we go. I'm just going to leave the slip in. We're just going to kind of go right down and try to land in this guy's front yard here. i got to love these slips. Slips in the real plane are really sketchy, and that's why I love them. All right, I'm going to hold that nose up. We're just going to go come down on the water. Extra slow this time. Delightful. I'm going to hold that nose up just a little bit. Now, I my understanding is with float planes, when you hit the water, it goes... <laughs> and basically sucks you down into it. Oh, that was sweet. Where's the brakes? Where's the brakes? <laughs> oh, uh, looks like Abdul Matlab is uh, going to go ahead and right over this little house and he's uh, gonna go drop off the goods for us real quick. Oh, I got passed. I don't think I got passed. I think I got run over. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, spin ourselves around here and we'll get ready for the next phase. Oh, come on. 
I don't know what this is about. I think it's something to do with the propeller hitting the light just right. So normally with these little planes, you can just jam on. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it still works. It still works. So what you do is you just jam on the throttle, and it calls you to a lot of air hits the uh, rudder and goes you to take a really, really, really tight turn. Okay, let's go ahead and slap up the flaps, and we will make our way for our final destination. Make sure everything's good. Whoa, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, 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 oh. Still got to land it. Oof. Oh, ouch. Oh, my back hurts even thinking about that. All right, here we go. Off to Sitka. Okie dokie. Now, the place we're going to be flying into today, uh, for those of you who are FSX fans, they're going to immediately recognize this one. It is uh, Sitka, Alaska. It has an absolutely beautiful runway. Uh, you can actually get some very big planes into there, but uh, we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Frank says he's almost there. It's all right, Frank. We, I have to climb up to altitude here, so if you bypass the uh, landing side of things, you'll be able to keep up with this, no problem. So for those of you wondering what a chandelle is, I'll go ahead and show you what a chandelle is. We're just going to do a 180 degree turn, taking up the maximum minimum amount of distance. And when we come out of it, we should be just above stall speed. And there's a chandelle. That is a, definitely a fun maneuver, except I have no energy. I'm going to smack into that mountain now. Excuse me. And we're safe. <laughs> nice. All right, I'm going to go ahead and trim for about 80 knots or so. That's going to get us climbing pretty efficiently. <laughs> yeah, we were on the East USA server today. Uh, we do West USA whenever we do any VATSIM stuff, which, like I said, don't think you guys are off the hook on that. I'm going to stick that right back to you at some point. Here's up for water landing. And I think next time we do VATSIM, we're just going to do it somewhere where this nobody actually is. Or that just, you know, my English is very efficient on Sunday when I'm not slept. But um, basically, we'll take a place where there's nobody so that when we do all that communication, it's still on a multiplayer server, so to speak. But um, again, you don't have to worry so much about it. So uh, for the person uh, Stevie M was asking a little bit earlier about uh, will there be any voice chat rooms, that will be the equivalent of a voice chat room because literally, that's essentially what that is. And this aircraft cannot outclimb that mountain. Excuse me, I'm just going to come to my left just a little tiny bit here. I'm going to actually leave my RPM at full. It keeps yelling at me. Gear advisory, gear advisory. Up for water. Shut you off. Haha. <laughs> All right, and uh, sorry about the time change. I uh, normally we do this like on Saturday mornings, but um, I had to work Saturday, so uh, that was kind of that wasn't gonna happen. All right, looks pretty good. A couple blasts to trim. All right, good time to change fuel tanks if you haven't done so already. Fuel pumps. Uh, my fuel pumps already on, so I'm not gonna stress about that too much. But I'm gonna boop just like that, and I'm not gonna stress about it too much. Uh, I apply. So if it's already been asked, uh, gears up for landing. Keeps going. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Gold Denny, just come here. I'm sure like the exact moment you said that, the thing immediately has shut off and stopped doing it. It is not a glitch. It's uh, supposed to be linked to some kind of uh, distance above the ground. <laughs> I know. I, like I said, you were gonna, you and I literally hit the button at the exact same time together there. So uh, don't worry about it too much. But it should be going off if we get too close to the ground. And I think it, like, it's supposed to be linked to this. I don't know. Like I said, I wouldn't try to land this thing on its wheels, which is funny. Oh, ah, now that's turbulence. I like that kind. I wouldn't try landing on its wheels. It doesn't mean you can't. I just wouldn't. <laughs> okay. So Stevie's the one that cut us all off. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. We're going to make our way there. It's not going to stop me. Like, I have my audio off right now. I don't actually have it on, so I can't hear things like that. So, again, if you hear the ground proximity warning system a million times, it just means I didn't get to hear it. All right. Let's start thinking about landing in Sitka. So I'm going to get myself a little tiny bit more altitude here, because um, as you can probably see, these mountains are not exactly short. And uh, we're basically going to pop over, and we're going to go ripping down down the valley. And we'll, of course, uh, put the dramatic sunshine on maximum drama mode just for, you know, not a really cool picture. One other thing, too, uh, for those of you who like to join us on our little picture at the end, we'll try to make a giant pile up on the beach or something like that so you can come join us for it. And the weird thing is usually I crash into the water, so I guess this time I have to crash into the runway? Is that how that works? <laughs> we'll see what happens if you do a gear up landing. All right. Cruising along. Love it. These mountains, for those of you who haven't tried this in VR, by the way, uh, this is absolutely amazing. When you just look at the edge of one of these, like this is one of the reasons why I love flying in the Andes Mountains and like Brazil and stuff like that. It's just, it's just beautiful. Where I live, uh, we do have mountains, but our mountains, um, you know, some people can jump over, I'm sure. Of course, it's not Florida, so I mean, yeah, we've got bigger mountains in Florida. All right, 3,300, uh, 3,500, 3,400, there it is. Yeah, we're just going to slowly drag ourselves over these mountains here. I don't want to get, like I said, we don't want to try to, like, oh, use ground effect to get up the mountain better. Don't do that. Although, it makes me wonder. <laughs> this looks very cool in X-Plane as well. Oop, passing over a ridge. You can feel it. 
<laughs> Look at this little lake right here. Could you imagine like just wandering up to the top of that and literally standing right on the edge and looking down that precipice to that little river kind of rushing down the middle. Ah, it's so amazing. Absolutely amazing. Of course, the part we skipped is the fact you have to climb to get up there, but I'm not going to worry about that part so much. All right, looking pretty good. Got some pretty good speed. Looks like we have just enough altitude to almost not not clear this mountain, which is uh, not cool, not cool. <laughs> Look at this, this is so cool. I just want to like, take my like sliding of what? <laughs> right off the side of that. That'd be so super cool. And we are now in a good spot. I'm actually going to go ahead and level off. And what we're going to do now is we're going to basically uh, thread our way through and we're going to pop right down into where the airport itself is. Like I said, folks who uh, remember Flight Simulator 10 will remember this part quite acutely. Give myself just a couple more uh, whacks of the down trim. One of the greatest things I've ever discovered for downward trim on an airplane, by the way, pitch trim, I should be more specific, is uh, using a rotary encoder for it. It is like the best thing. I, I don't know how I lived all these years without using a rotary encoder. All right, looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and level this thing out. Autopilot on. Go ahead and put an altitude mode. Altitude in nap mode. And by the time the thing actually kicks in, I'll sure I'm be like five feet lower. <laughs> All right. So this was another fun experience with the automatic pilot today is every time there's one mode on it called ST. You know, I'm an avionics guy, but I've never seen ST mode before. So of course I press the ST mode and what the plane would do is take a left turn in a giant circle. And I'm like, okay, I'm not doing something right here. All right, let's uh, crank up the FSX lighting here. Achoo! And there it is. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? All right, I'm gonna go flip on everything and make sure we're good to go. Angle light comes on. We're gonna go and flip on the strobe light so the folks behind us can see us as well. And we're basically gonna thread our way through. Uh, Sitka's basically gonna be right through the middle here. Not too difficult of an approach for sure. Bring that nose down a little tiny bit. We're just kind of basically kind of thread through this. I'm looking down at my cylinder head temperature. I did not realize it was 403 degrees. That's not so good. Look at that sun, the way it like vibrates. Ah, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so good. So good. So as we're kind of getting lined up, uh, is there any specific uh, suggestions or ideas where folks would like to fly? Like I said, I just wanted to do something a little different today, and you know, I do a little bit of floaty stuff. Yeah, I was, you know, I'll tell you one thing I was thinking about doing, other than, again, another VAT sim flight. Uh, this time, though, I'm going to go get my friend uh, Austin, who's uh, he's way better at that stuff than I am, and I'll just do the fly, and I'll let him do all the talking. <laughs> yeah, the live weather is uh, a little intense. That happens. Uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> That's safe. I'm going to go back to my uh, really, really high quality clouds here. There we go. Nice. I actually did a uh, RNAV into here when I was practicing this with the live weather. And uh, not to my... You know, I shouldn't say not to my, uh, to my chagrin, of course, uh, that visibility was literally so bad and the wind was so heavy and the rain was so heavy that I basically had to go beyond the minimums that were recommended in order to actually put the airplane down on the ground. Um, obviously, everything turned out fine. Of course, you're not supposed to land on wheels in this thing, but whatever. Uh, Neofly multiplayer missions. I'm not sure what that is, Frank. Could you tell me a little bit about it? Again, it's a Neofly multiplayer missions. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, I'm open to suggestions. I just like picking a random place to fly, but that sounds like fun too. We could all do FS Economy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, in the real world, please don't fly between these two things like this. That's just so darn dangerous. Darn diddly dangerous. There we go. Of course, uh, Dr. Pot here is uh, reenacting his FSX fantasies as well. And he's like, who are these guys who just uh, randomly showed up here? Oh my gosh, I don't like the fact I cannot see the edge of those mountains. But then again, I've got that oh, kind of synthetic vision down there that lets me know what I'm looking at. Start backing the throttle up a little bit, and we're just going to kind of sneak our way down here. Whoa! Excuse me. Okay, we're good. All right, let's start reducing power. We don't need to be ripping so fast. All right, straight off our nose. I think you're going to recognize the runway. The only difference, like I said, is instead of coming down that way, I kind of skipped and went over the top, because remember, we're not using the actual airport. 
career mode. Mountain flying nets. <laughs> Look at this. This is, oh, I love this. There's the airport. So that's good old-fashioned uh, Sitka. That's, that, like I said, alone. you do this in FSX, you come and actually land this runway. That was the only time I think I ever messed up a mission. It's because I basically came in at like 45 knots. The plane stalled and I smacked the propeller, but Microsoft's like, you get credit for the mission anyway. And I'm like, oh, thank you. But I was like, I really mangled that one. Like, really mangled that one. And it's in a Cessna. Like, you can't mangle a Cessna. Jets. Now, what I was really, really, really looking forward for, speaking of jets, Steve, is the fact that we did not get the opportunity to fly the um, F-18 yet. I mean, we do have uh, a couple of payway airplanes, and I actually have one of them. You know, it's, I forget which one. It was the Fiat G91 is the one that I picked up. And that would be a fun thing to do, but a lot of people would need some really, really high-performance airplanes in order to keep up with us. Obviously, we could stick to the rules and, like, the speed limits and all that other good stuff, but um, that's not why I fly military aircraft. Although my understanding is the F-104 is going to be coming out relatively soon also. So uh, with that, oh, that's, that's, that's exciting. All right, so check this out. So if you take a look uh, straight off our nose, uh, there's going to be the little bridge. It's going to be right here. So the actual landing site is that little channel that actually is protected against the uh, stronger waters of, you know, the Pacific Ocean. So this one right here, if you take a look right where I'm looking, that's basically where you're going to be landing today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do like a half a left downwind here and I kind of swing around. There we go. Just kind of working this out real quickly in my head. Let's go ahead and return our RPM to the correct value. Put the mixture control a little bit further in. And I'm just going to hold the nose up. I'm guessing the traffic pattern altitude is probably around 1,000 feet here. But again, it's a water landing. You do what you got to do kind of a thing. You got to fly over it really, really loud first so you can scare all the fish out of the way so they don't come up and bang into your airplane when you land it. All right, come swing around like this. And we're just going to go ahead and take this. Look how cool this is. I just want to kayak. Like, forget the airplane for a minute. Yeah, that, that, that bridge looks a little sketchy, not going to lie. Oh, look at that. There's like a little dock and everything. I'm sure you can like do like the whale tours and things like that. Look here. And this is the world's uh, steepest uh, turn you're not supposed to take. That's okay, though. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'll get a plane nice and dirty, dirty. I keep seeing these like weird little lines every once in a while on the propeller. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. This is uh, not exactly the most wonderful version of a traffic pattern here, but I'll take what I can do. Bingo. All right, let's sneak over. Gears up for water landing. Nice and relaxing. Like I said, nothing too stressful here. And this is the one downside about a high-winged airplane is you literally cannot see when you take these turns. So uh, one of the tricks that I learned on uh, flying in the real world, and it, yeah, it's probably not a good idea, is basically... Um, when you go to take your last turn, you just take it really, really, really wide. Or not wide, you take it very, very gently. And it basically creates the world's like longest kind of like base leg. But when you do that base to final, it makes it really, really, really simple to uh, see what you're looking for here. There's the bridge. I'm basically going to whack and uh, hit anybody who happens to be standing on it. Here's Check my landing lights. Everything's good. All is in the green. I've got my RPM set correctly. My fuel is set correctly. Airspeed's a little on the low side. Again, we just need just a little bit to get over the bridge here. Now you gotta imagine there's this guy like in his little Ford Explorer, you know, it's got all that really, really nasty salt and stuff right at the bottom of it. He hears, <laughs> we go ripping by. Love it. Alright, I'm just gonna gently hold the nose up. And we just wait for the cuss splash. Seven and a half degrees, and we're down in the water. Nice. Here's up for water landing. All right, for those of you who like to uh, join us with a neat little picture here, I'm going to go find a nice soft spot. I mean, there's, I kind of like this dock over here. It's kind of nice. Although if we want to be really dramatic, we should like kind of like sneak over here and like kind of grab like, like where the light is or something like that. All righty then. I'm going to kind of pull across. Do something like this. Let me kind of make my way a little bit over the water here. Flaps back up. Again, let's uh, play uh, Mr. Photographer here. Here's up for water landing. I can even do something like this. Ooh, that's awesome. Here's up for water landing neat <laughs> all right come to a complete stop i like how i got like the little lights on and everything all right i'll wait for everybody to come join us uh let's see here our iCow is sitka it's alpha 29 uh, we just got in the water so if you folks would like to join me for a quick little photo i'll feel free to kind of bounce your way over here and uh kind of just pile on in what i'll do is i'll cheat a little bit <laughs> and i will kind of hang out until everybody uh, kind of wants to come join in the picture <laughs> that's so cool Okay, I made it too dark. I'm sorry. 
Thank you. Yeah, right there. Okay, good enough. Here's up. That is just ah, I love that. Here's up for water landing. Oh, she's still telling me to get my landing gear up. Oh no. Up Got it. Thank you. I have no idea who that person is, by the way. And now uh, that person certainly does not know that I forgot to take out the trash. All right, I'll give everybody a few moments to kind of little pile in and we'll pick what side everybody kind of ends up in. We'll take our little picture and then I'll find something nice and hard to smack us into. Obviously not a building because that would not be appropriate. Maybe we'll find some trees or something along those and just kind of go digging into them. And a loaded alarm is going to come join us. Looks like, whoa, GamerSense is just popping down right there. Nice. I have to start taking some pictures. Try to get at least one quick picture here, just in case uh, something else doesn't work out. Lo Yellow boy sneaking in. Uh, Frank's uh, sneaking in now. Nice. This is so cool. So cool. I just got to imagine that, you know, we just kind of like stormed this coast right here. Dr. Pot. Nice. All right. It's going to kind of chill here. I'll kind of do one of these things. I'll stop moving my head for a second. Man, I lose like no water right here. A regime is uh, making his way down now, crossing right over that bridge. Again, that Ford Explorer at this point has uh, pulled to the side of the uh, runway. Or, whoa, easy. Uh, pulled to the side of the road now. It's like, what is going on? It's like all these float planes that come ripping around down here. And we're going to go ahead and take a look. Looks good. Yeah, I'll call that the picture right there for now. By the time we all get turned around here, it's uh, going to be the 930. Okay, let's uh, do some wanton destruction here. So I'm going to go ahead and give us a little bit of power. We're just going to kind of take a little donut here. And now we're going to go stick this thing onto the ground. <laughs> no, there are no brakes. Uh-oh. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right. So um, this is what happens when you land without landing gear. If I don't destroy the airplane, I will be disappointed to myself. All right, there we go. And we are on our way once again. And we're going to go find that nice runway, and we're going to land on it. And again, you can't see my finger quotes, but um, trust me, they're there. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, Lonnie, to Alaska stuff on my stream for a while. I love Alaska. There are spots, like, if you wanted a really, really long live stream, like a two hours and 45 minutes kind of a thing, you could try to do uh, some of those passes uh, right outside of Anchorage that have like their own special little cameras on them so that you can identify whether or not they're even visible, that you can get through them. It's like, you know, get a big brumbly brumbly DC-6 or something along those lines and try that. That'd be awesome. All right, my landing gear are definitely up. Let me go ahead and look down real quickly. Looks good, okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So are there any good questions for the good of the order here before uh, we call it a night? Oh, yes. This is not going to be... This is going to be a little grindy. Oh! Oh. I was really expecting to see sparks. I'm not going to lie. Um. Ow. <laughs> right now, I'll pop that thing back up. Does everything still work? Let's see if I can deploy my landing gear and see what happens. Oh, <laughs> I'm broken. Oh, well. So anyway, hopefully you folks had a good time tonight. Like I said, this is always kind of neat to kind of tool around. Oh, look at that. Now I'm on the ground. Uh, yes, uh, feel free to uh, try to land the plane uh, without being able to uh, safely land the plane there. That seems uh, kind of dangerous. All right, so hopefully everybody's uh, had a good time tonight. Like I said, try to keep things a little on the down low. Uh, we've been doing some pretty chaotic things lately. We'll certainly give it a try again at some point to, uh, like I said, do some VATSIM stuff. I would love to do some things with high-performance jets. Whoa! <laughs> you guys coming just a little hot there. With some high-performance jets, and uh, again, at some point, we'll probably do something really, really dangerous, like an IFR challenge or something like that. Uh, yeah, that was a 300-point landing out there, Steve, so be careful. And there, sharp is over. Bye, and whoosh. Have a great night, everyone.